Howdy SEOmoz, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. I'm currently working inside SEOmoz and since I've been here, I have been working to improve some of their Google Analytics setup. And I thought it would be really useful to walk through some of the things that I've been doing with SEOmoz and some of the tracking that we've installed and why we've installed it. And in this blog post, hopefully down here below in the post, uh, you'll see some code snippets that you can use to implement some of these things and show you how we've been doing it at, at SEOmoz. Okay, so the first thing that I've implemented at SEOmoz is rolling all of the data into one profile. So SEOmoz, thankfully, don't have too many websites. There's mainly just SEOmoz.org and Open Site Explorer. But all of that data currently lives in two separate profiles. And so what I want to do is I want to roll all of that data into one profile. In particular, I want to be able to see people that come to Open Site Explorer and then click through to SEOmoz and then purchase Pro. And I want to know where those people came from originally, rather than just knowing they came from Open Site Explorer. So you do this by implementing cross-domain tracking. And this involves uh, doing a bit of code on both of the websites, but also making sure that when a user clicks between SEOmoz and Open Site Explorer, that click is tracked in the, in the URL. Um, and actually, the implementation that we have set up uh, includes tracking that using the hash rather than a query string so that we don't end up with messy URLs all over the place and potentially getting them indexed and all that kind of stuff. So this uh, is really useful and this allows us to get a bit more data about where people are coming from, how they're browsing the site, and in particular, how the traffic interacts between SEOmoz and Open Site Explorer. And that's really important because Open Site Explorer gets about 200,000 visits a month. And so that's like a, not an insignificant source of leads for us. So we should really understand where this traffic is coming from and, and how it's browsing around the site. So the next thing I've got set up at SEOmoz is user-level custom variables. And this is really useful for us. So on SEOmoz, there are, all, there are four basic states that you can have. You can either be a visitor for the website, so you're not logged in, we don't have any information about you. You can be registered with the site, so you're registered, you can leave a blog comment, uh, you know, you're kind of signed up with the site, but you're not paying us money. Or you can be a pro member, so you actually have access to all of the pro features and you're a fully paid customer. Or you can be an admin, so that's people like me and the staff uh, and bloggers and so on uh, who have kind of you know, uh, advanced privileges. And these four basic states are really useful to have within Google Analytics. So being able to look at how visitors browse the website, how registered users browse the website, how pro users browse the website, and how admin users browse the website, or more importantly, excluding how admin users use the website, th these, these four states can be really useful. So it gives us more information about the different types of user and how they use the website. So uh, a, a particular example for this is some of our tools, the URL is the same whether you're logged in and you're logged out. But if you're logged out, you can't use a tool. So visitors viewing that URL have a very different experience to registered or pro users visiting that URL. And that can be really useful, but there's no other way of seeing that within Google Analytics, because if the URL doesn't change, that page view would always be the same. So using this kind of data, we can start to understand how people are using the site, what experience they have when they land on our pages, uh, and really get a, a slightly deeper understanding of, of the, the traffic to the SEOmoz website. E-commerce tracking is another thing that I've set up. So you can do goal tracking in all kinds of different ways in Google Analytics. Uh, when I, when the, the historically, they have been doing goal tracking actually using goals. Uh, but I find that that's not necessarily the most robust way of tracking actual uh, revenue purchases. Uh, goals can be a great way of tracking, you know, kind of um, uh, newsletter signups or uh, a registration or something like that, uh, where the URL kind of path uh, works exactly. But with e-commerce tracking, we can actually get a bit more data. We can get the amount that they paid. Uh, we can get the uh, the location where they've they purchased from, uh, and, and and all this kind of um, more interesting data and more robust data into our analytics. Uh, and actually having revenue data in there is a really big win because that allows us to start segmenting our channels and saying, well, we got this many signups, but actually this much money. Uh, and this will become even more important as we start to roll out new pricing levels. I know there's a few uh, new pricing uh, levels on the way, so watch out for those. Um, site speed, uh, I wrote a blog post about this that last week, but Google Analytics now lets you track the load time of your pages directly within Google Analytics. And it does this by uh, sampling some of your data, and for those sampled users, tracking the actual load time for that page. And this is really important because you've, you've been able to track load speed in all kinds of different ways previously. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of third-party tools and uh, monitoring systems that you can use to, to track the, the, the load time of your website. But this actually lets you break it down by page type. It, you can actually look at logged in and logged out uh, users and sessions. Um, so for example, uh, pro.seomoz.org is the subdomain where a lot of the web app sits. And, and we can actually look at the site load 
for all of those users uh, by, by just segmenting the URL in the site speed function. Unfortunately, at the moment, we can't use the custom variables with site speed because uh, Google Analytics, I think, is still rolling this out. They haven't got those that, that data lookup uh, in place yet. But hopefully, at some stage, we'll be able to look at this and this together, which will be a hugely powerful report for us. Um, and then the last thing that, that I've got set up is calling events rather than virtual page views for all kinds of uh, what, I, what I guess I'd call secondary goals. So things like when you click on the RSS feed on the blog to so sign up for the RSS, uh, historically, we've been tracking that with virtual page views. And actually, if you look on the site at the moment, we still track it with virtual page views. But I want to start rolling over on the site to start using events for these, because uh, events is a much cleaner way of tracking those kind of on-click uh, uh, actions. And, and there's all kinds of things we might want to track for on click. So we can track a click on the RSS feed. We can clack, click, track a click on the Twitter account, Facebook. Uh, if you leave a blog comment, um, if you interact, whether, whether you thumb up uh, a QA and a or whether you thumb up a blog post, uh, all these kind of in, like mini interactions, uh, we can actually track that all within Google Analytics. But using events means that we don't start inflating our page views, don't start getting uh, a kind of messy URLs all over the place. Uh, and so this is really the, the best way of doing these kind of mini goals. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an overview of some of the things that you might be able to implement with Google Analytics and importantly, why you might want to implement them. Uh, and we're going to have all the code snippets like I mentioned in the blog post. So watch out for those. And any questions, please uh, leave a comment. Thanks, guys.